What's up, guys? It's your boy James, aka 68J, coming to you on this Thursday. And I'm super excited as I have two amazing guests with me today. Uh, I'm super, super excited to have Greg on the show and Alaskan Squeeze. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. How doing all right. Now, now, Greg is the CEO of ARC Institute and Alaskan, you're the VP of ARC Institute. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep. Yep. Now, Greg's gonna, our I'm, main man. I'm his backup. <laughs> I, like, I love it. The bodyguard. I love it. Um, no, the crazy thing is since I've announced that you guys were coming on the show, I've been getting an overwhelmed uh, response. You guys have a phenomenal thing going and so much support out there. It's just amazing. I mean, every day I wake up, I've got just crazy messages from supporters, people excited about you guys coming on the stream. But before we get into who you guys are and what you do, I want to know a little bit about you guys uh, prior to crypto. And if you don't mind, Greg, I would like to start with you. Just just uh, what did you do prior to crypto? Um, if you don't mind, just take your time and then uh, Alaskan can go ahead and uh, follow you after that. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm Greg Pruitt. Um, so I grew up in Arkansas. And after I graduated, I, I went into the Coast Guard. And oh, wow. I was okay. there for eight years and enjoyed it and just decided I was ready to uh, move on to something else. So uh, I did electronics in the Coast Guard, which opened up a lot of opportunities for jobs. Um, nice. And I found crypto. So it uh, kind of changed my direction and where I wanted to go. And then I found the the Riley economic system. And, and uh, that's kind of how ARC got started. So. That's that's where I am now. Now, when you say Riley Economic, that's Patrick Riley. Correct. Yeah, we oh, are under the umbrella of a two ministries. What what an amazing guy! I had him on the other day. He was just so phenomenal. I, I definitely got a lot of positive feedback for having him on, and look forward to having him on again. That's amazing. Awesome. Small world. Small world. Um, and uh, Alaskan. Well, yeah. Thanks for having me on, uh, James. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Um, appreciate everything you're doing for the XRP Ledger too. Thank you so um, much. And crypto in general, being honest. But um, yeah, I uh, originally, as you can hear, I don't speak American. I speak English. So <laughs> I'm originally from uh, Liverpool, uh, England. I've been out in Alaska now for approximately 18 years. Um, drive trucks for National Park Service in Alaska. Um, work seasonally. Um, Single dad, uh, two little boys, um, Saxon and Dane, uh, both born here, um, Alaskan through and through. Um, and yeah, I've uh, I've had lots and lots of jobs in my life. Everything from when I left school 16 right the way through to now, I've done just about everything. Um, this is my first foray into anything financial, though. Um, and I'm enjoying it immensely. It's a whole new world. It's... Uh, Everything's changing. We're on the cusp of um, a new dawn, let's say. So, yeah, things are looking good. Um, Work-wise, um, as I say, I drive trucks right now uh, for Denali National Park. Prior to that, I've managed um, gas stations, stores. I've worked in construction industry. Um, when I came to Alaska uh, 18 years ago, I bought 15 acres of land, built the house I'm sitting in right now. Um, had two little boys and yeah, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm a big crypto fan, um, a big, um, Riley economic system fan, a big XRP fan. So yeah, I'm good. Happy days. I love it, brother. I know before when we just met uh, backstage, I was asking you if uh, you could teach me that accent. I think it would give me better points with my wife, just to be honest. Maybe I can play a few extra characters with that. Let me stop. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, let me let me go right into it. Um, uh, so uh, obviously you guys both have a phenomenal backgrounds in what you've done, uh, professionals, um, and obviously have families. So um, I know as far as my why of why I got into crypto, what was your reason for getting in, into crypto? We hear anything from family to a better tomorrow to legacy what, what 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 motivated you guys uh individually to get into uh, crypto i'll start with greg so initially um the reason i got into crypto was because i started learning about how our financial system works how the dollar works what a scam it is <laughs> um and and i knew there had to be something better eventually because it's not gonna last forever uh so i started learning about bitcoin um bought a little bit uh, I actually 
the the first time I ever sent Bitcoin from an exchange to my wallet, I remember it was about an hour later and it still wasn't there. And I was like, oh man, did I just lose that? You know? <laughs> and then of course, not long after that, I, I found XRP and sent XRP for the first time and went, whoa, that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's obviously um, positives to XRP as opposed to other cryptos, but uh, you know, I, I, I'm not against Bitcoin. I, I just yeah. know it was a, it was good for what it was. Right. Uh, it's a good store of value, but XRP obviously is is where it's going to be. That's right. Yeah, I, lo I love the way you said that, too, because uh, it just shows that we're not maxis. You know, we're diversified. We, You know, we're but at the end of the day, it's not like it's like saying I don't appreciate the first will. It was wooden. It was strong. It did what it needed to do. It was a first of its kind. But there's so much better now. And I think, you know, I love hearing uh, people like you acknowledge that, you know, um, um, but yeah, it, it's I remember uh, before I get into uh, go over to Alaska and, um squeeze i remember my first couple experiences with bitcoin i think it caused me more anxiety because you're just looking around you're trying to search like did i do something right you're going through all the numbers because it can take like you said forever mm -hmm. and it, it causes panic and whereas you know you could literally transfer and again i'm not trying to be biased um i remember my first time i ever sent xrp uh to a friend of mine he's a doctor uh um christian dan boy in, in nigeria and um when i sent it I asked him if he got it. And before I could even finish saying, did you get it? And he, you know, as he was looking at his phone, I heard, I heard a ding, ding. And he he was just so blown away. And that's what really did it for me. That was years ago when I first got in. I just wanted to test it out in, you know, sending money, uh, sending uh, XRP to Nigeria. It was so instant. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. So I definitely feel you on that. Uh, Alaskan, same question for you, brother. Uh, what got you into crypto and why? Well, yeah, my, my story is very similar to a lot of people, uh, James um i wasn't in super super early um you know in fact when bitcoin first showed up i was very suspicious and very critical i'm like what do we need this kind of digital money for this is kind of stupid you know what i mean that's never going to catch on right. um i was definitely ignorant i didn't look into it properly um and sadly i was happy in that ignorance as well um and i think that's uh, a reflection my view back then is a reflection of a lot of people now yeah. with regards to crypto. They're happy in their ignorance of it. We all know that's not going to last. But yeah. Um, yeah, so look back now. I wish I'd got into it earlier. It was a mistake. Um, I actually first ventured into the world of finance during the pandemic. Um, I started dabbling a little bit in stocks. Um, uh, we're all kind of locked down. No one had much to do. So yeah. um, stocks didn't feel right. They felt kind of cumbersome, uh, slow. Um, nothing was moving fast enough for me. Yeah. I'm a little bit of an impatient guy. <laughs> um, I want to do it now, you know. So then I started looking more at digital assets. Um, it was round about the time um, Doge and Elon Musk had their little love affair. Right. Um and I did a little bit of Doge and made a little bit of money, not a lot. Right. Um, I like the volatility. I like the speed. I like the way things moved in crypto. Right. Um, I didn't have a lot of money. Um, I tried my hand. Sometimes I did good. Sometimes I didn't. Then I did. Then I didn't. Right. Um, I thought Ethereum was going to be the big thing. Um, I thought it was going to be the rails that everything kind of ran on, you know. Um Everything was going to be built on that. And I started buying ETH. Um, it was when I started transacting using ETH. And it, the, and as Greg said, the slowness and the, right. the cost yeah, was please. extreme. And I was just like, this doesn't feel right. doesn't feel like it's what it should be, you yeah. know? Um, I looked at Bitcoin and, you know, the granddaddy of crypto. And I'm like, that's not, not for... And then... I started looking around a little bit and I finally discovered XRP and I thought that is it. And I started looking at what is built on XRP and I'm like, yeah, this is the ecosystem I want to be in. Love it. Love it. I've dabbled with other stuff too on um, the Ethereum thing. Um, and I like a lot of coins on there, but I think XRP is where I'm at and the XRP ledger. 
Love it. Love it. And this is going to be directed towards, um, I don't know if this is a, a two-part question or two-person question, but I like to uh, ask the CEO, Greg, what is ARC Institute? Like if you were to um, give us a good overview of, of what exactly you guys do. Can, can, can I just jump in real quick? I don't, um, I just want to, before we get into ARC Institute itself, I think it'd be a good idea to just get a little idea as to where Arc Institute came from. Um, sure. Yeah, and Greg himself, he's the man who actually came up with the original idea okay. for Arc Institute. Um, he's a very, very caring, thoughtful, considerate, um, helpful guy. Will do anything for anybody, Greg. He's an awesome fella. Um, and we met, became really, really good friends. And um, he was already interested in blockchain and the technology um and he really really wanted to reach out and be able to help people and touch people um so we spoke about it a little bit and neither of us had much in the way of knowledge of how to go about linking the two together um greg had already met with patrick so patrick then reached out sorry greg reached out to patrick um and Patrick was the one who kind of tied all our loose ends together. So right. Greg's a star for starting Arc and the idea off, and Patrick who came up with the way of making it all work together. And Love I'm going to pass it over to Greg now, and he can tell you all about it. Love it. Greg, appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I met with Patrick because I found his, his uh, project. Uh, this was very early on, right after he started Reaper. Okay. And um, so I, if I'm going to put all this money in, into this project, I want to make sure that he's legit. Right. And, you know, it's not a scam because scams were all over the place at that point in time. Yeah. So I, I flew down to Texas from Alaska and met with Patrick and spent a couple of days hanging out with him. And he's as legit as it gets. So I, I told him if, if you ever have any um, charity or nonprofit you want to start um, on, in your ecosystem, I'd like to run it. And he said, absolutely. Wow. So a few months later, I, I came up with the idea, you know, what if I used his tokenomics that he uses for Reaper uh, to fund charities and, and go out and find the best charities? Because I, I was doing all kinds of research on nonprofits at that time. And I, I was running into issues like finding good charities. Right. Yeah. So I decided, you know what, let's, Let's go out. Let's find the best ones, and then use his tokenomics to to fund them. He loved the idea, and he said, "Let's do it." And then we started you, building it. And I I think that's kind of the time that <laughs> the anxiety set in because I'm like, I I don't know what I'm doing here. I I am not qualified for this. Right, right. And and I told Patrick that, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, you are, uh, because you have the passion for it, and that's wow. all that matters." Now I have a question for you. I don't want to cut you off, but yeah, I do. Yeah. While this is on my mind, when I think of what you just said, as far as helping people and charitable, that that's giving. That's 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 love. That's that represents a lot of things. That only make and I don't know the answer to this, but does that mean that art came from the from the word like Noah's an ark, like ark helping? It's part of it. It's part, okay. It just yeah. I don't know why that came to me, but I, I love it. I love it. Keep, continue, yeah, so continue. The, the idea was kind of Noah's ark was there to, I to like save it. people from the flood, right? So we're I love we're it. To save these charities. Um, and and help them along their way. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I'm one of those conspiracy theorists that believes the Bible's true. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take the entire Bible and, and put it into four words, it is love God, love others, that's and right. that's what we're here to do. Um, we're here to be a light. So that's kind of where art started up and where it came from. Um, so what we do is is we we have a voting mechanism on our website. Okay. And our holders can go vote every two weeks for one of the four charities that we we fund right now. Uh, it'll be more down the road as, as we grow. We're going to grow the amount of charities that uh, we support as well. Okay. And then based on your holdings of ARC token, uh, you can vote for which charity you want money sent to on, on your behalf. Okay. And that's kind of the way that ARC works. And then it also pays a, a passive income to ARC holders. So half of it goes to pay the charities. The other half uh, goes to uh, pay the ARC holders at passive income. 
Okay, so um, I want you to continue on. I've got the website up. That's what I was trying to pull up right now. So if I were to go to ARC Institute, what am I seeing here? Uh, like if I want to do I'm able to go over and pick a charity? Like do you guys have a list of different charities? Yeah, or how, so do, how does – You can go to click on ARC Charities or you can click on Voting and it lists those. But ARC Charities will kind of go through which one uh, – what a little bit more detail about uh, who they are, what they're doing. I love this right here, Battle Dogs Saving the Veterans. This is something, you know, me and my wife, and I, I typically don't get too much into politics and stuff like that, but it's one of the things that it's a passion. You know, I was raised up again myself in church. I was raised up by a mother who, uh, even when she passed away, high schools back in Fresno planted trees in her name because she was a giver. She mentored children. And uh, one of the things me and my wife always talk about is veterans and how, you know, with all the money that we send out of this country and to try to help everyone else, I think we need to pay more attention to our veterans. So that I, I definitely love seeing this. What other, um, so well, these are just- so Real quick about Battle yeah. Dogs. Um, okay. We did an auction last year uh, okay. to raise ARC tokens for their uh, personal XRP wallet. And during that auction, we decided to auction off two trips up to Alaska to go to Battle Dogs. Oh, and wow. We just got back last week. Um, we did a week up there, spent time with them, uh, helped them building things, uh, get to know them, get to know what they're doing. And uh, Fruition Films reached out to us and said they wanted to come up and, and film us and interview us and get to see what Battle Dogs is all about. Wow. Uh, wow. It was such an amazing week. So that's because, yeah, Chris and Chris and Maya just said they were up there interviewing. So you guys are who they were interviewing. Okay, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So one of the most memorable memorable things about the trip for me, and I'll I, I'll let Steve talk a little bit about the trip too. But um, so so they they run dogs, right? Dog sledding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's based. They basically do retreats for veterans that are struggling with uh, TBIs or um, any other military related illness they're going through and it's they they call it a reset it's a reset for the veterans and it didn't really dawn on me exactly what that meant until they took us out running the dogs wow and, and as i'm going through this on the snow on this sled and these dogs in front of me and the peace that came over me it i mean it brought tears to my eyes because wow. it, at that time it clicked the, this is what the reset is all about. It was it was incredible experience. Yeah. Before we go into uh, uh, Alaska, and I want to read it. it says saving the veterans, where our nation's combat veterans can go to reset. Battle Dog supports warriors transition back into civilian life via phases of outdoor rehabilitation, mentorship, and leadership in the beautiful state of Alaska. Founded by an uh, Iterod competitor and staffed by veteran volunteers, veterans get a week in Alaska to relax, reset. So they, they pay for all this? Is that how it works? They, they sponsor this through your donations? They pay for the trip. They pay wow. for their that lodging, so their food, all of it. I love it. That's amazing. It shows right here the total donations. Uh, I, I'm just, I want to get into that because I really want people to uh, be a part, you know, of this, uh, mm -hmm. this movement. And um, if you feel uh, motivated and prompted, uh, to uh, want to help and give back. This is a phenomenal way to do that. I see you guys have quite a few things here and maybe we can get into some of those things here uh, momentarily. Or if you guys want me to go through these things, you guys are uh, more than willing to speak about it. So Alaskan, um, please uh, give us some more information on this. Were you able to go up there as well? or? Yeah, well, well, I live up in Alaska. So for oh. me, it wasn't a plane. Greg used to live up here in Alaska too, but he recently headed south towards the sunshine and to family and what have you. Okay. But I'm still up in Alaska, so I only had to travel um, about three hours down the highway to get to Battle Dogs. So um, great experience. They're awesome people, really, really genuine. Um, we only pick uh, quality um, charities um, that we actually have on our books. We, on we only pick quality ones. They have to pass our gates and stuff, and Greg will get into that in a minute. Okay. Um, the trip itself, um, a phenomenal. It was lovely seeing the um, some of our um, arc holders come up, the winners of the competition, uh, meeting those guys, chatting with them, uh, spending a few days. It was really nice. Took my boys down to um, and what hosts um, Rick uh, Costello and and uh, Jen. Unfortunately, his wife wasn't there, but awesome people. 
Yeah, I, lo- I love it. And, and I, I actually just clicked off, but I'm going to go back on it because there was something that just was really near and dear to my heart. Um, now it says where it says, um, where's the one I was looking at here? Raising men and women. Is that like through lawn care, teaching them how to have their own business through lawn services? Well, so this is a guy named Rodney Smith Jr. Um, okay. who, so his, his story is basically he was driving down the road and he saw an, an elderly gentleman trying to get his mower started and was oh, wow. he pulled off the side of the road. He got it started. He mowed the lawn for him. And then the guy thanked him and, and he got back in his car and left. Um, and he, at that time was when he said, I know what I'm going to do with my life. Wow. So he started raising men and women lawn care. And what he does is, uh, encourages the youth all across America to do the 50 yard challenge, which means you do 50 yards for, um, elderly veterans, um, handicap, whatever, you know, whoever needs the help and you just go mow their yard after you do 50 of them, he dry every year. He makes a whole loop around the United States to every state and gives those kids a free lawnmower, a free weed eater and a leaf blower after they do the 50 yard challenge. That's incredible. I mean, that's power. That's, yeah, I mean, yeah that, that's uh, it, it's amazing just hearing that and understanding what you're saying just brings all the emotions out as a young kid who struggled. You know, I, I always talk about, you know, why I connected John Deaton, you know, the welfare, the 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 uh, projects, the the hard knocks. And, and uh, I have the same story. So I remember being a young kid at 13 that wanted to help a struggling mom. And so I just I just love stories like this, this is absolutely incredible. Um, let, let's get into. Um, what I want to ask you guys is what attracted you specifically to um, the XRP, XRPL ecosystem? Was it, again, what you saw with Patrick uh, Riley? Was it something you were already attracted to prior to meeting Patrick? What specifically wanted, wanted you guys to be affiliated with, uh, you know, XRP, XRPL? You want to take that one, Steve? Uh, yeah, I'm fine starting with that, Greg. No worries. Um After I, after my ETH kind of um, interest um, was kind of squished, um, I started looking around for something that was more attractive, more real. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, um, I've always kind of mistrusted the government and uh, government overreach and what have you. I just don't think a lot of what they do and and how they run things is kind of correct in the correct way and. Um, I'm a little suspicious of how things are done. So um, I became aware of XRP um, around about the same time I became disillusioned with ETH. And I saw um, the SEC making moves on XRP. Mm. Um, And I thought, hmm, that seems a little fishy. Something's not right there. Why? So I started looking into XRP a little bit and, and I couldn't understand why the government and the sec were why 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 xrp why pick on xrp you know um and not other coins for instance um it it piqued my interest at the end of the day so uh, i actually went out straight away and bought some xrp um right at the start of the sec action um and as i delved deeper into the xrp ledger itself um and started seeing what was actually being built on there um uh, some amazing amazing projects i finally discovered reaper financial and um that grew and grew into five interactive projects including arc which i then became involved in um when i met greg and we uh, started building things i like the whole financial ecosystem um it's all about Uh, helping humanity it's about making the world a better place um and of course all the passive income that comes along with it so i was as soon as i got into xrp itself which i think is an awesome coin um and everything that it's capable of doing i started realizing what was actually being built on it and i'm just like wow this, this i don't have to go anywhere else this has everything so yeah and that's basically where i ended up so I suppose at the end of the day, I can ask, I'm probably one of the only people who can thank Gary Gensler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Gary, because without you, I probably wouldn't have found the XRP ledger. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And uh, Greg, you can either uh, um, go 
over that as well, or if you feel he did a good job, we can actually go into another question, but that's, that's totally up to you. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, I had this kind of understanding that, that everything was eventually going to be tokenized. Um, you know, whether it's fundraising for charities or paying your debts uh, off uh, or, or putting anything of value onto a blockchain, it, it was very clear to me at first that XRP ledger is the only one that can, can handle all that because you got to yeah. think we give um, we make payments in, in uh, uh, passive income to thousands of, of holders right. every two weeks. We couldn't do that if we were on any other blockchain yeah. with higher fees. Yeah, I love that. And and uh, I love what Rosemary here. I've been sharing some of the comments here. She says uh, Arc Institute wants to be the antidote to distrust. Uh, both distrust in mainstream charities and distrust in uh, of crypto as well. And I, and I agree with that because I know, you know, me being around for so long, um, you see these charities that, you know, a lot of people just were using them as ideas or, or you know, you hear about these these people who are above the charities misusing funds. And I think that's something that when you when you look at, you know, with anything that you do, you want to look at the people who are running it. Um, obviously, uh, you know, if we talked about Ripple, you know, you got Chris Larson, Brad Garland House, Integrity you know, uh, trust, uh, um, just, just first class all the way. I see that with Patrick Riley and I can also see that in what you guys are doing as well. Cause I know, uh, um, you know, when you have someone of that level, Patrick, and, and, you know, I can see why you guys uh, wanted to affiliate yourself with someone like that. And it says a whole lot about you guys as well. Um, and so talk about, uh, that, that comment there about, uh, just really want to set the tone for, uh, giving back in the right way you don't mind uh, oh, yeah uh, there was it, it was a couple of things you initially and I, i'll say real quick uh rosemary is, is part of the arc team as well so uh very very hi rose <laughs> um so the the initial thought was we want to change the make a paradigm shift of the way that that charities are funded because charities are having to go out and beg for money right I, they spend so much money and time on fundraising well, right. that's an issue when we got this technology that can change how that works. Well, as we were going through and trying to find our charities, we found a, another issue, which was okay. finding the charities. So there, there is a major distrust. Uh, so that was how we came up with our gates and and what the basically the guidelines for what they have to how they have to run uh, in order to be on our list. Right. That distrust, big time. Yeah, I, I like Toastman Tech's question. It says, question for Greg, can you tell us about any upcoming charities you guys may be looking at, on board? And then my question in addition to that is, how do you look for them? Is there something, is it just things that maybe you're passionate about? Uh, you, you know, uh, how do you guys find these charities and do you have any, anything coming up uh, soon? Either one of you guys is fine. Well, um, I, I'll just uh, real quick and then I'll let Steve take over. But uh, we're we are really looking for a um, child trafficking charity. Um, the problem is it's hard to find a good one. It, it yeah. seems like anytime you, you find one, you, you see red flags everywhere. Um, so that that's one that's either we're going to find a good one or we're going to start our own good one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, that's kind of what we're looking at next. Uh, maybe some shelters. Uh, we, we've got different ideas of, of what we're looking for, but uh, we, our community members have, have uh, mentioned a few of them to us. You can go on our website yeah. and, and, and uh, if if you have one in mind that you like, well, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you my opinion, um, and and I want to definitely hear from Alaskan Steve, Alaskan. Um, I say Alaskan Steve because you said his name, but Alaskan uh, uh, Squeeze. And it's crazy because I just asked Alaskan where are you from, and I should have just looked at your name and figured it out, right? <laughs> 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 but no, I mean coming from a uh, as a young age from uh, uh, raised by a mother who was uh, abused or. Uh, uh, watch a lot of women. I, I think that's something that has always been something I want to do. And I've talked to my wife about that. Even, you know, when we get to uh, the finish line of what we want to do, um, it's something we've talked about, uh, charitable work in that realm of helping women. There, I think that's something that's uh, very well needed. I think um, um, it's one of the reasons that I, uh, I'm i so passionate about Ladies Night that we just started, which will be on tomorrow. Um, but I think anything in that in that realm of helping women, uh, because a lot of times, more often than not, they're the ones stuck with the children. They're the ones stuck trying to figure things out. Um, and so I think, I think that's a, a beautiful thing, something that I know me personally, I would be very uh, motivated, beyond motivated. And in all the charities I'd be motivated to donate to, but specifically something like that, just because it means so much to me. And I think it means so much to a lot of people, either they've gone through it or they know someone who have. Right. 
Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I think I agree with everything that Greg said. Um, we have to, because um, we're a new, a, a new, uh, a new startup. Um, we've been going for about just over a year now, you know, and I think so far we're, we're probably approaching somewhere around uh, $90,000 or somewhere around that altogether that's been uh, raised and, and donated and what have you um through arc 86 but, um, what's that 86800 thank you yeah I, I knew we were getting up there you know for sure um we have to though be careful um at the beginning as to how many charities we can actually onboard ourselves um it's a slow process we don't want to dilute um any of the funds that we're getting we want the actual funds that get sent to charities to actually make a difference to them rather than have so many charities on that they're all getting pennies right now they're all getting a substantial amount of money and it's making a big difference to them um we will be onboarding more as arc grows um we the, the way arc is actually constructed and built charities themselves can actually onboard themselves and, and we do have like a, a almost like a partial onboarding, I suppose, where we're going to be helping uh, charities that don't necessarily meet all our gates, but meet some of them. Um, helping them, guide them in a direction where they can end up meeting all our gates and helping those guys set up wallets for themselves, um, maybe funding them to get them started, showing how it all works, getting them involved in uh, digital assets um, and making them realize how what we do and and the benefits that can come from digital assets and owning them and the sooner they get involved the better at the end of the day so yeah. there are more charities coming our community as greg said our community offers ideas all the time um the founder members have meetings we sit down we discuss the charity we all do our own independent research and then come together and just and um if the charities meet all our gates then we'll be more inclined to be taking them on board we constantly check the charities also um we have had another a charity on i don't want to go into which charity it was we were happy with them uh, but then things started to alter and change a little bit we spotted differences and possible issues and decided to remove them from from our books so we're, we're on it we're watching we want to make the charity space better we want people to be able to have faith in charities again because there's a lot of people do not and they think a lot of charities and they are a lot right. of charities are not great places yeah you know ceos might you know be millionaires and what have you of a charity and it's like yeah. hang on a minute yeah. something's not right so right. yeah we're making a difference and we're doing our best to make a difference you know i appreciate that and i definitely uh, agree with everything that you said now there's an entrepreneur in me as well that wants to ask this question uh and it was motivated by specker uh who uh, if that's how you say it uh arc is a win-win for everyone charities get a steady stream of funding while also providing passive income for its holders love it now uh as an entrepreneur obviously i love helping people but if i have a, a, a opportunity uh to help and by default of helping i can earn money or whatever passive income can you guys talk a little bit more about that uh greg like as far as um how do you know how does that work you know how do you earn money is it like a staking thing if you know if you can explain that it'd be awesome yeah so it, it basically works the same as the other um res tokens do uh it's okay. it's a controlled inflationary model which uh, you know inflation it's it's such a dirty word these days but that's because we compare it to the us dollar Right. Um, where, we, you know, they're, they're printing nonstop and there's no control, no oversight. Um, but what we use is a very controlled inflationary model where we started out with a hundred million and then every month we met 1 million more. And then we sell those at market and that's how our funds are generated to pay the charities and then to pay the passive income to the holders. Gotcha. Um, and to put that in perspective, it would take 86 years until ARC has the same uh, total supply that XRP has. But it's actually even more than that because every two weeks when I mint 500,000 and then sell them, 
um, Reaper actually comes in and, and buys ARC based on its votes and okay. burns ARC. So it, that actually controls the inflation a little bit more. Right. Um, um, so that's how our funds are, are generated. In, uh, and then as Ascension does a, does a similar thing like Reaper. Ascension comes in also and purchases Arc, and then it um, kind of has its own mechanism of passive income to holders. Um, it dishes out several different um, coins and tokens, and one of which is Arc. So, in actual fact, you, you can actually get yourself a circular passive rewards going on. If you hold our coin, that will bring you in Reaper and Ascension as passive income. Reaper itself holding that will bring in XRP and some other utility okay. um, that we're working towards. And Ascension will bring in several tokens and coins as passive, including ARC, which then brings you back around to receiving more Reaper, more Ascension, more ARC, lots of other coins back around again. So it's a circular passive and it's really, really well well constructed and well brought together. Okay. And, and can you guys let me know what the ticker is for ARC? It's ARK, but it's not going to be on uh, oh. coin market cap. Okay. Okay. Because we are not on any. Uh, centralized exchanges. Okay, okay. Where can they find you? Uh, XP Market's a good one. SP Market, okay. And Sologenic, Sologenic Dex as well. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I can go that. Is there a site for either one of those? I'm not familiar with it myself. XPMarket.io. XPMarket.io. And then you can just type in ARK and it'll pull it up. Okay, let me just put this up here. And we can type in right where it says search. A-R-K. And we have the very first one right here. Oh, love it. So there's there's obviously a, a great uh, opportunity um, to get in for a good price, looks like. We are a very small market cap, yes. Awesome. So you guys, uh, again, uh, do your own research. Uh, but I definitely um, would say that based off of what I've seen and the fact that um, it's for a good cause, make sure you guys look more into ARC Institute and uh, all the things that they're doing. So I'll leave this up so we can come back to it. Uh, let's see here. Also, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a huge favor. Uh, go over to uh, your X account. Uh, find um, these two gentlemen's account. Uh, the first one is going to be. Now, how do you say this right? Is it got to be? Got to be. Yeah. That's gotta what a be, lot of people call me. Yeah. Gotta be Reaper. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like so at gotta uh B R P R. Uh that's the CEO and founder of Arc Institute. Guys, make sure you guys go over it and follow uh my friend Greg. And then also I want you guys to go over and uh follow one of the greatest supporters on planet Earth. Uh, at least to me, he is, and I appreciate all he's doing. Uh, my man Alaskan Squeeze. Um, and he is the VP of Arc Institute. So guys, uh, please go over to uh, both of their uh, X accounts, give them a follow and learn more about this incredible opportunity presented um, by Arc Institute. Now, with that being said, I wanna shift it uh, in a little bit different direction. Uh, we talked about this gentleman just a second ago. I wanna talk about John Deaton uh, briefly. Uh, I want both of you guys' comments on what do you think he means to crypto? Not just, you know, XRP, obviously we know that he's, you know, part of that 75,000, which I actually signed up for and emailed him and got, you know, I was involved in that. But what does he mean for crypto as a whole in what he's doing and representing uh, running for Senate? Uh, either one of you guys can take it. I'll let you go with that, Craig. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it would be huge to have him uh, in Congress. Um, I, I, I think I'll give more of an anecdotal answer. Um, as far as when I was in Vegas last year and got to shake his hand and see how he, he walks and um, when he came out on stage and, and how the, the entire crowd reacted to him walking out. Um, says a whole lot about him versus who he's running against. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> when, um, you know, it, when I go on and, and see a Elizabeth Warren tweet, um, I'll go through the comments 
and it I, it's impossible to find a positive comment to her or somebody that's not ragging her um and then you go on to john deaton's tweets and read his comments it's very obvious she is only backed by establishment um and he is the the one backed by the people it would be huge if he won i don't know if he can and i, I just i just hope he does yeah yeah and I think uh, regardless of the outcome, the fact that he just took a stance, uh, which it seems like that's his M.O., he just he stands up for people. He does the right thing. He stands for, stands up for the truth. And I think that's the thing that has really impressed with me uh, since I've been in this in this space. He's just he's never wavered. And so that, I appreciate that about John in a big way. Yeah, he didn't, um, he didn't jump into this because of Ripple getting um, attacked by the SEC. He jumped into it because they said that uh, every holder – of XRP is holding a security. Well, that puts yeah. us in jeopardy, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why he jumped in, and that's yeah. powerful. Yeah, he's, de yeah. he's definitely a man for the people. I think, absolutely. Um, I, and I think everybody who's met him, as Greg said, and the vibe at the um, XRP Las Vegas last year when he walked on stage was pretty phenomenal. Um, it speaks volumes about the man, I think, and um, I think he's gone or heading into the political arena for the right reasons. Um, yeah, I, I, there's a saying, isn't there, that like power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I think that's where we are with a lot of the political uh, leaders, leaders, I should say managers, really, because they're not really leaders, you know. Um, they... Um, Many of the people in positions of power today seem to be corrupted absolutely, you know, uh, by the system, by the power that they've got. Um, all you have to do is look at politicians' salary um, and then look at their net worth. And it's like screams out, you know, how, how did you do that? You know, yeah, yeah. Um, John, John Deaton, he's going to make an awesome senator if he can manage to 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 win and pull it off i uh, i have faith in him i have hope that he manages to do it and i think if he succeeds other people will follow um i would love to actually see i'm gonna say this i'd love to actually see john deaton come on your show james i think it would be awesome for the xrp community to see john again hear what he's up to see the hear the progress he's making um so yeah if john if you're listening get on with james you need to get on here and uh, the people of the xrp ledger um they all love you and they support you and they want to they want to be part of what you're doing so come back to us and we're here for you yeah, I agree. I think it, it you know, I, I don't know if there's any political reasons why he couldn't come on, but I know that the great thing about, you know, some of the people that I have on and uh, it's been, you know, um, I've had situations where I had to submit my questions so they could present it to their legal team to make sure that everything was up and up. And if not, they could change. So, you know, definitely, John, if there's something that we need to stick to, let us know. We'll make sure we uh, stay on topic. But I think it's uh, especially in this uh, space or in this uh at this time where everyone wants to back him up and just let him know how much we appreciate him and love what he's doing. I think that would be absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the next question I have for you guys and shots out, by the way, guys, um, uh, fruition productions in the house, uh, got a chance to film with arc last week in Alaska, uh, great charities they are working with. And, and I, I agree, you know, first of all, when I think of first class, uh, when I think of integrity, when I think of doing things for the right reason, uh, I think of Fruition Productions, Chris and Maya. Uh, and when you look at all these things, guys, the fact that you guys are working uh, on an ecosystem with first class people uh, with with the XRPL and you, you go back to Patrick Riley, you go back to who you guys are, you go at, back to Fruition Productions. I think it's pretty safe to say that this is a beautiful thing. And and uh, I definitely support you guys and all that you do. And uh, thank you. And shouts out to uh, Fruition Productions for being here. So um, the next question I have is Ripple. Um you know, do you guys feel that this is a um, um, a real company, uh, um, a big time company? And if so, why? Ah, yeah, absolutely. My goodness, just the partnerships alone that they have. And then as they're being sued by the SEC, they're continuing to build in, in every country around the world. Um, it's it's insane to know how big they're going to be. Uh, and, and I love how uh, Brad Garlinghouse put it when he when he said that 
uh, it's kind of like Amazon when it was an online bookstore. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where Ripple is with doing on-demand liquidity. And it's just the beginning of what they're going to change uh, when it comes to blockchain and digital assets. Um, they're, everything of, of value is going to be on blockchains. And they're getting a head start at, ahead of everybody. Yeah, I agree with you. Alaskan? Absolutely, yeah. Um, they've proven themselves time and time again. Uh, the contracts they're getting, the connections they've made around the world, um, well beyond uh, other digital assets, um, uh, much better than other digital assets have managed to achieve. You know, I mean, Brad Garlinghouse is a powerhouse, really. Uh, he's polished to perfection. He's, he, you know, you just take one look at him, you hear him speak. Uh, the things he says, um, everything about it is good quality. Um, all that said, um, there's one thing I would love to see Ripple do a little bit more of, um, and that would be uh, paying attention to the projects that are being built on the ledger. Um, a little acknowledgement, a little nod, something. Um, I think it would go a long way uh, to helping the ledger itself grow. It would show people that XRP isn't the be all and end all. It's an excellent thing that it's doing, bridging, you know, and, and what have you. But what's being built behind that? I'd love to see Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple. Um, just give a nod and say, look what's being built on here. Look at yeah. these quality projects, not just the ones that we're representing, but there's other huge quality projects on the XRP ledger too, like Treasury, StakeX, yeah. Xdix, Zoge, Smeckles. The list just goes on and on. Yeah. And then obviously the Riley economic system. And I think uh, I think it'd be great to hear from Ripple yeah. and from Brad. Yeah, I'll add on too um, with with the stablecoin they just announced for yeah. later this year. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, obviously, all the jokes are going to start coming in. You know, um, <laughs> I thought XRP was already a stablecoin, um, but the, I mean, obviously, they know something, right, about XRP and and to have a stablecoin built on on XRP Ledger and also on Ethereum because it's you know each blockchain has its purpose uh, in our financial system that's coming, right? right. They understand that and, and uh, the ability for those to interact with each other is is gonna increase from here. Um, but it, the fact that they are gonna have on a monthly basis, a third party come in um, as far as disclosing, uh, showing evidence that there is a dollar backing or a, a government bond backing each stable coin is huge because there's so much distrust when it comes to stable coins with USDT. Um, it's it, it's going to fix all of those issues that people have with the stable coins that we have now. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree with you. I think, um, you know, when you think of uh, going back to your previous comment um, uh, about uh, ripple, when you look at the fact that um, just who they are, what they represent, um, like I said, when when things got really bad in the market and everyone was running for the hills, uh, there was companies that were folding, going out of business, firing their CEOs. They didn't know which way the SEC was coming. It just really showed um, how strong some of those projects were. But yet they kept building. They kept expanding. They kept uh, uh, acquiring certain companies. They kept bringing on some of the best talent around the world. It just said a whole lot while, while fighting this ridiculous lawsuit. Um it just definitely uh, spoke volumes to me of uh, Ripple and and what they stand for. Um, and I think, you know, I always give the analogy of, uh, you know, when I think of how they've been treated, you know, it's like the government know, knew exactly what they were, you know, what they had. You know, I, say, I always say that the, the ones who understand uh, XRP's purpose and utility is obviously Ripple, uh, the retailers that invest, uh, the institutions that are either um, – have been revealed or and i would imagine many that have not because they're waiting for you know clarity and then i also think the u.s government they know exactly what it was created for and uh and for that reason i always give the analogy of uh the u.s uh, olympics I, i'm sure you guys might have heard me say it a couple times where back in the day they had this uh these skaters uh, nancy kerrigan and tanya harding where tanya harding hired the mugger to hit nancy uh, kerrigan in the ankle so she couldn't perform so she could take her place and i really feel like that's like the e ethereum eth gate sec ripple story um because at one well, point we yeah go ahead if you think about it the sec went after amazon early on yep yep because they yep. knew what was coming 
Yeah, and and I want to I want to play you guys something, and I, I do this a lot just to kind of get a, some type of a um, spark, if I could, um, from your thoughts of. Um, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, it's something that my friend Molly Elmore said the other day, and I want you guys to kind of hear it in there. Let me know your thoughts on it here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Molly rocks. She's awesome. Okay, let's see if I can put this up and see what you guys think about what she said here. Bombay doors. All right, a couple of things. One, Gary Gensler has done us a service by having those MIT courses uh, publicly mm, available. Mm, yeah. And in one of those courses, he said that if you want to move in to the banking world, the legacy, the, the legacy banking system, the monopoly, you got to like pay up like in the mob. You've got to, you know, pay the mob, Don, of the, the other family if you want to enter into a new market. And so this is what the fine looks like to me is they've conceded that XRP is going to be used and they're like, right. We want our our kickback. Like, right. Does that sound, you know, like something that you you would, you know, agree with when you think about, um, you know, you got to pay to play. And um, and when you know when you think about, and I'm I'm going to ask you guys this question: your feelings on that ridiculous two billion dollar asking price? Uh, you know, I don't know if they are silly enough to think they'll get two billion, or you know, the real number is somewhere in the middle that you know they're hoping that to uh, settle with Ripple. But you know, based off of her statements, you got to play to pay. And is that what's really going on here? Is is uh, they're looking for Ripple to pay? Like you said, Amazon was sued. Once they got past that, they exploded. Is that you think maybe what needs to happen here, or what they expect to happen with with uh, Ripple XRP? Yeah, I I don't even understand the two billion. Um, it's yeah. it's insane to think that that was the first number they went with. Maybe they were like, well, let's just swing for the bleachers and and see where we can end up. Um, but there's no reason that Brad Garlinghouse shouldn't send him a big old middle finger back. Uh, it's it's just insane. But yeah, it, it's definitely pay to play. Um, I I think what she said was pretty spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo Mo Molly definitely um, says things in a very clear way and precise way, and I think she hit the nail on the head. Uh, as far as two two billion, um, I think. When you start haggling, which is basically what is going to happen, you have to start high. And I think the higher you start, the better you will end up, or the better amount that you will end up with. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it's a ridiculous amount, you know. So I would suggest that Ripple come back with, uh, "We'll give you ten bucks." <laughs> and then we'll uh, and then we'll start closing the gap and then we might get to a reasonable number right uh but yeah i, I can see why they've done it um but i think it's just, it's as uh, kind of stupid and ridiculous just like yeah. everything the sec is doing and everything they've done to ripple and xrp holders yeah. i think it's crazy yeah, I think I think uh, from from Ripple's standpoint, and just as a as a business person myself, I think they would want to try to come up to some type of reasonable um, outcome. Just because, if not, the SEC probably has a way to just prolong this, you know, yeah. uh, years to come. And so, um, I, I would imagine that even though the number is ridiculous, and I don't see them paying that number, I think hopefully it's the start of, like you said, um, you know, coming to an agreement uh, here soon. Uh, my next question would be, um, and again, this is not financial advice. Um, and um, I want everybody to remember that. But just your personal thoughts on where you see maybe XRP in the short term versus the long term. Uh, and you can span that over the next, you know, five years or so, whatever. But, yeah, just your, your thoughts individually on that. Short term, um, I think by the end of the bull run, we, we've got every possibility of getting to 26 bucks. Um, based on the charts, uh, if it does anything like it did in 2017, I mean, we could be looking at upper 200s, 280. Um, will that happen? Probably not, uh, but it could. Yeah, if you think about it, um, there's we just passed 5 million XRP wallets. Right. Yeah, uh, something like that, yeah. Which is 0.0625% of the entire population. And you also have to understand that most people have multiple wallets. I, I've got eight of them with mine, my personal ones, and work uh, right. for art, you know. So it's it's just insane to think that we can't go that high. Um, it's not it's not about uh, market cap. Um, it's about demand. It's about liquidity. It's about supply, right? 
So it, there's no reason we couldn't go that high. And even with the valuations, the valuation models, um, eventually when XRP is fully being utilized for what it's going to be, there's no reason it can't go that high. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I think uh, some things are going to have to obviously happen. Um, I think them coming to a conclusion with this this settlement, uh, because I think that's probably the last part of what. And and obviously we know what what Stuart already said. Uh, he said, "Look, Brad and, and Chris are not going to settle unless uh, everything else is dropped and Ripple's deemed uh, not a security, which we already have that. But obviously they just want it all to be over and done with. And I think once we have that, the sky's the limit. Predicated, like you said, off of what we've seen in the past and how it moved before. And it kind of behooves me sometimes to to look at people who don't really understand that it can go that high, you know, like as if Bitcoin wasn't 50 cents or, or less than that, you know, back in the day. And so, uh, but then I think people also confuse, and I'll, I'll uh, turn this back over to you guys as well. The fact that there's a difference between retail and the fact that we'll move as the rest of the market moves. And then what I, what I can only think that Brad means when he says flip of the switch moment, which is when institutions hit. And when that happens, I think is, is something that we can't even fathom. I don't think the average person can fathom uh, what it was created for. And for so, someone on that level of trying to understand it from a business perspective, maybe you go back and look at what Ripple said, you know, and, and you know, and Joe Katz, as far as, you know, a $10,000 price, or you go back and look at Jimmy Valley and those guys and Molly Elmore with uh, the Hill uh, 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 Capital when they were saying the 25 to 35,000. And then, you know, I had a guest on the other day, Dave XRP line that says, look, man, if you really want to understand from a mathematical genius perspective of what it really could get to, uh, Excuse me. He was up in you know a million dollars a coin. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but then you have a lot of things in between, like uh, Lewis Jackson who broke it down uh, to you know seven thousand to seventy thousand. So there's all these different price points, and and we don't know. I wouldn't say when it, when it's going to happen. Instead of saying if, I think it's more when. Uh, but again, that's not financial advice. Um, but yeah, go ahead, uh, Alaskan. If you want to add anything uh, else to that before we go to the next question. Yeah, I, I would just uh, say that. With that new stable coin that they're bringing out and some of the comments that people have said with regards to um, why do you want to uh, create a stable coin um, for XRP when XRP is kind of like a stable coin already. I, I think that in itself answers the question. Um, Ripple know that the future of XRP, they know where it's going. Um, they know that it's going to be a lot higher than it is now. and so that is why they're creating a stable coin to do what they need to do and use that for what they need to um xrp itself i see uh end of this year i think um into 2025 um my own view my and again not financial advice but i would think it's going to be somewhere around about the 10 to 13 dollar mark i think we're going to have something happen that's going to bring it back down again but even when you're talking, um, it's not going to come all the way back down where it is. It's going to settle somewhere in the middle, three to five dollars for a little bit and then maybe travel sideways for a bit. Eventually, I agree, it's going to hit much bigger numbers when institutions come in, um, uh, big companies uh, and what have you. They're just going to eat up the supply because everyone's going to be wanting to hold some. Um, no one's going to just want to rely on um well we need to send this we need to send that um go get some and now it'll be bought up hold uh, and held and the price is going to climb accordingly so yeah i i see a future xrp in the hundreds and maybe more you know um but definitely in the short term 10 to 13 dollars by the end of this year early next year and that's going to be life-changing for many many people who hold xrp now yeah. You yes, have to understand that when when institutional capital starts really pouring in, um, those guys aren't buying it to sell it for dollars later. You know, they, they're going to know what they hold, especially right. some big dogs that come in and, and buy it up. That's right. They're not they're not planning on getting dollars for it. You know, right. they, they know what they hold. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and by the way, thank you to Nerdy X. Uh, uh, tell everybody, make sure you hit that like and subscribe and notification bell. Uh, right now, guys, we um, are at uh, just over 600 approaching 700 live viewers between X and YouTube. I'm going to ask you guys to do me a huge personal favor. Go over to our Crypto for Life uh, YouTube channel where you guys can see all the incredible uh, information here that we share. Let me see if I can actually pull that up here. 
Um, so yeah, you got to do me a huge favor. You can see we're live now. Uh, we've got some incredible interview guys. You guys can go back and see everything from Shannon Thorpe to AJ, uh, former with BitBoy. Actually, he's working on uh, some things for me right there. Uh, Edo, you can see Molly, you can see Jimmy. Uh, and we've got some incredible, incredible things that are coming up. So guys, go over to our CryptoFly page. Again, hit subscribe and the notification bell and show all your support. Uh, appreciate you guys in a major way for, uh, for viewing. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to um, talk about is you hear this statement, know what you hold. Um, and my question to both of you guys is um, it was something that used to elude me for so long. Why don't more people understand the value of XRP? You see these maxis, you see these people who are willing to invest in Chicago coin doesn't really exist. I just make up the name because I don't want to offend anybody's coin, but you know, they'll go out there and go, oh, I want Chicago coin because it's 15 zeros and a one and maybe one day I'll get rich, but they don't see the value in something like, you know, XRP or ARC, ARC Institute's coin or whatever the case may be. So, the question that I have specifically for XRP is why do you feel people get so frustrated because they want a now price? They're looking for the, the scratcher, the lottery ticket, the, the casino pull the handle, and it does what all these other meme coins are doing. Why are people getting frustrated? If you guys can both take that question, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I understand the frustration. You know, you're investing because you want to increase your portfolio. Um, and, and seeing it just go sideways for seven years, it, it's hard to watch. And yeah. the ones that have lasted this long, are, you know, they're the ones that are going to make it. And I've always said there's going to be so much FUD right before it happens. I agree. And you're seeing it. You're seeing people leave the XRP ledger, um, going to other blockchains. But as, as far as like uh, why, are, why people can't see it, um, you, you got to understand people's – realities their worldviews are based so much on on mainstream media and what they hear on the television right. and it, it's constantly being pounded in our head how horrible crypto is and i, I hate using that term anyways but yeah it's it's constant um the they use the sam bank free scandal to make people scared of crypto when it it kind of backfired on them because Everything on the blockchain, you can go back and verify. And it was going through Ukraine and then to the Democratic Party, and they were just watching it. So, right. But they they use that to give us more fear of of what's inevitable. Um, yeah. So the more people can like break out of that that matrix, um, it, it it'll start happening a lot faster. I agree. Yeah, I think uh, people's frustrations come from having to hold for so long. Um, it's difficult holding XRP, knowing what you've got, knowing in your heart of hearts where it's going to end up and where it's going. Um, but at the same time, you're seeing, you're getting constant FUD from people all the time and you're seeing other coins doing this and other coins doing that. Um, and yeah, it, it, I think... And then XRP is just kind of going sideways and we all get excited when it goes up 10 cents and then it's like, oh, this is it. And then, oh, no, 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 it's not, you know, yeah. and um, we all know what's coming. Um, our time is nearly upon us, you know. Um, I just keep thinking like um, William Wallace in Braveheart, you know, hold, hold, <laughs> you know, um, right. because it's coming. And as Greg said, they're trying to... Um, they're trying to keep everything for themselves. The legacy banking system is, um, it's greedy. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it owns everything. It wants to own everything. It wants to, um, e everything it does is about ownership and owning everything. And it wants control. And it's hard for it to do this with blockchain and with cryptocurrencies or as a better term is digital assets really. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. Um, XRP, as far as I'm concerned, is it. And I'm just going to keep on holding and yeah. keep on building on it. And, and we're going to get there. Yeah. And, Don't and lose we, the faith. That's right. That's right. I, I have a question for uh, for both of you guys. Um, you guys can both answer. Or, or um, uh, How important are these elections for crypto? And and what do we you think we need to see to have a positive, uh, maybe even a better outcome uh, moving into this, this election year? Are well, you good, Greg, or do you want me to go? Yeah, I mean, it's it just all comes back to CBDCs. Um, 
they're coming, whether we like it or not. Uh, but what's going to make the big difference is, are we going to have that uh, legislation out yet before it happens? We need, we need that consumer protection before CBDCs come, uh, with, which keeps the power in, in, in control in the right hands. Uh, sure. there's, there's definitely a war going on right now, uh, which we're all fighting for, right? We're on the right side of history. Yep. Uh, but that, that consumer protection has to happen before CBDCs come uh, if we want to keep it from just controlling our entire life. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you big time. Uh, what do you guys see... Um crypto um in the next five years where do you guys see that i would say next five years um it's probably we're probably going to be heading towards mainstream adoption um in the next five years at the moment they're doing everything as greg said and you alluded to it yourself they're doing everything they can to malign uh digital assets make people fearful scared um until they are ready and what I believe once they are ready and they've got them, then it'll be, oh, this is a fantastic new, look what we've got. This is brilliant. Come on board, come on board. And they'll start bringing everybody into the fold. Um, company. Once companies start, you'll get investing and stuff. You'll get people will start to see it and come on their own anyway. But I think so much fear has been created Um uh, in a lot of people, even then they will, they'll kind of miss the boat and miss the opportunity and they'll have to be um, almost prized into the digital um, currency world. Um, so I, I think I think in five years, I think it's going to be about the three U's of crypto. I think that's that I think the three U's of crypto right now, it's all about um, you know, speculating on price uh, and what have you. Oh, we're going to moon. We're going to do this. I think the three U's of crypto are uh, utility, first yeah. and foremost. Um, then there's utility. And yes, you guessed it, utility. Utility is where it's all going to be. Um, it's what can these projects do? What can these coins do? What are their capabilities of? I think there's always going to be a place for meme coins, um you know for a bit of fun and stuff and i think james maybe shikaka coin should be your <laughs> meme coin maybe you should create it <laughs> you know uh, i'd go for it but um that's funny yeah i feel like corporations big business are going to be adopting digital assets and uh they're going to be relying on the utility that these different coins and different tokens produce and have and yeah. um Anything that isn't doing something that is helpful and beneficial to big tech, big companies, big corporations are going to fall by the wayside. Yeah. Um, and they, that's where the benefits are going to be in the future, I think, utility all the way. Yeah. I, I think in five to six years, it's it's going to be that uh, that transition into the new financial system. Um, and, and yeah, you know, agenda 2030, that's, that's kind of their goal. Right? I showed, yeah, I showed 222, right? Right. Um, well, since, since yeah, I, I think that right, five right. years is, is, um, is, is about the time because it's going to be a controlled demolition, right? Um, yeah. they can't just dump the old and, and all of a sudden bring in the new it's yeah. got to be that medium where they, where they eventually cross and, and we transition uh so i think that five to six years away is when that happens yeah you guys thoughts on bricks ripple and the bank of international settlements you want to go greg yeah go for it wow uh, okay see we're both keen on this question <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh bricks i think um it's going to be good for the financial world overall um competition is necessary whenever you have um monopoly um it ends up becoming a massive um corrupt monster you know and that's why we have you know um monopolies commission and things like that to stop this type of thing and i think um the way the country's been monopolized by the dollar for so long 
um we've we desperately needed something like this to come along and i think it's going to be good for the whole world and finance and what have you um ripple i think are gonna are sitting pretty really uh everything built on the xrp ledger is also sitting pretty um they position ripples position themselves um to be one of the major players in the new financial system um the a lot of the old legacy systems going to drop away and disappear over time will there still be banks and stuff i'm sure but they will they'll look different compared to what they are now yeah um and decentralization i hope wins out you know i think they're both probably going to end up running alongside each other um um there's always going to be people who want to be looked after rather than want to take control of their lives and i think people like that will um tend to um stick with more of a centralized system because they'll feel safer because it's what they're used to but then you'll find a lot of people will start to realize that custodying their own funds their own money businesses taking control of their own assets yeah. um i think that's the where we're going to go with that but i think bricks and ripple um it's all good we we have a couple more questions that I, I have, but before I do, I want to go into actually uh, just yeah maybe like one or two more questions. I want to go to uh, the chat here. Uh, we have uh, Toastman Tech question: What can you guys tell us about the uh, coming, uh, the up and coming Arc card, the upcoming Arc card? Yeah, so uh, we we're we're starting to uh, search out for a, a partnership. Um, so what the Arc card is going to be is a basically like a credit card with a qr code on it okay um one thing we're trying to fix with it is is how do you donate money or give money to a homeless person in a digital financial world yeah. uh, when when cash kind of stops being around and so we're it's it's going to be a card that we can give to homeless people where you don't even have to roll down your window you can just scan it with your phone give wow. it to them and then they can take that card to an atm uh and they can actually transfer money between each other you know in their communities um and it it's a way to help fund uh homeless and uh move money in a cashless society i love it i love it that's amazing it, it definitely well, it definitely creates um it helps people become their own bank doesn't it you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of unbanked people out there, and what our card will do will allow people to become banked again. I love it. I got, without, I got a no, go ahead, my friend. No, no, I was just saying without the banks, without without, without the banks, which, yeah, which is, they'll be their own key. bank, <laughs> which is key. I love it. That that concept is amazing. Uh, shouts out to uh, let me throw a couple of shouts out to the chat here and all this incredible support we have. Almost 700 people now here live. Uh, shouts out to US XRP, uh, Jason Jude. Welcome, Iron Man, my brother. Welcome, uh, Protein 40, Rosemary's in the house. We got the Indie uh, Odyssey, World Be Free. Looking forward to having you on the show next week. Uh, the ladies of crypto, by the way, guys, if you guys get a chance, make sure you check out uh, our crypto for life. Um, let's see if I can bring it up here real quick. Uh, before I ask these gentlemen the, the final couple questions here, uh, let's see if I can find my uh, where is my um, I thought I had my uh, there it is, crypto for life. Okay. Guys, uh, we have an incredible show planned for you guys coming up. Uh, let me just uh, refresh this here. Ladies night, guys, make sure you guys check it out. It's going to be uh, tomorrow. We have some phenomenal uh, ladies that are going to be here uh, uh, with special guests, Molly Elmore and Shannon Thorpe. So that's going to be 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm sorry, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do not miss that incredible show tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that as well. With that being said, guys, let's go into uh, CBDCs, good or bad, your opinion. I think with, like anything, it can be good or it can be bad. A lot of it depends on who is doing it, who is running it, um, who's in charge, yeah. and their motivations behind what they do. Um, I think... We're going to have two different types of CBDCs. You're going to have wholesale CBDC and you're going to have retail CBDC. Now, the if they're going to have re a lot of regulation in the CBDCs and uh, with the wholesale side of things, that can be good. But when you start pushing it into retail and you start using CBDCs for nefarious 
uh, activity for control of the people um that's going to be a real big negative so i think a lot of it depends on the mentality that is behind what is put out there um and i think the more people that know about the potential problems with retail cbdc's for we the people um there's going to be a lot of pushback um and we're going to have to it's going to have to be something that's policed and watched very carefully because if it's introduced to retail cbdc initially nothing bad will happen but over time power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and that's what will happen it'll be a way of controlling the people over many many years will it be a major problem in my lifetime i don't know but I, i'm concerned for people um for my children for instance yeah. you know my boys yeah. as they grow up what kind of world are they going to grow up into um if you have a retail cbdc that is uh, monitoring everything you do uh, everything you spend allowing and controlling what you do and controlling your yeah. life you know yeah i agree greg did you uh, yeah i mean i i kind of already answered that one it's, okay okay it's the consumer protection uh, if, if congress would get off their butt and do something about it yeah um then we'll have a better understanding of where cbdc's can go um who's going to be controlling what um yeah but yeah i mean it's it's coming whether we like yeah. it or not so, yeah i think I, yeah. I think it's important that people head down a decentralized road at this point. You know, uh, we have the opportunities now for people to start um, holding uh, different coins that they like, um, different coins that benefit them uh, in whatever way a particular coin does, um, and becoming their own banks, um, right. having their own uh, digital asset wallets on their phone. Yeah. Um, the more it, it gives people more less reliance, say, on um, government institution, you know. So I, I would suggest to people that you definitely start doing your own research into yeah. uh, cryptocurrencies and digital assets, without a doubt. Become yeah, your own bank. Digitalization is going to be key for all of it, whether it's finances, your identity, uh, your data. Uh, it's it's going to have to stay decentralized, which is you know, basically what we're fighting for in this, in this battle. So yeah, I agree. They're going to be key. Yeah. And shouts out to uh, the crypto for life family. We always, uh, we have a little inside thing. We say EARF that's planet earth, not earth. It just means that you're in crypto and you're doing things today that other people won't do in order to have the things tomorrow that other people won't have. You're doing it for the family. That's planet earth guys. I appreciate you guys in a major way. Before we get up out of here, I, there was a couple of questions that I actually saw here. Um, there was a question, and I'm not even sure what this is, but maybe you guys would know what that is. A question, can you guys touch on the drip fund that ARC holders will also benefit from through their RPR passive income? Is that something that you guys want to answer right now? I'm not sure. It just came out of the group. Give you guys opportunity. Not I'll sure let you think that, Greg. Go for it. Drip fund that ARC holders will also yeah. benefit. Yeah, I'm right. not sure what that is. Could they be talking about how... Um, if you are an ARC holder and you receive passive RPR, you then receive the drip in XRP. Is that what they could be sure referring to? I'm not sure what he's asking, to be honest. Yeah, so yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah at, the end of, at the end of the day, if you hold yeah. ARC yeah. and you receive passive, in holding ARC, not only do we donate to charities, but you will also receive passive as well. And passive comes in the form of Reaper and Ascension. And both of those also give you passive um, if you hold on to the, 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 what, you, what you receive. And in the case of Reaper, you will receive passive XRP. In yeah, and, I'll, form I'll of a grip. Quick, and that's, that's um, the only thing I can think that they might be meaning. Go for it, Greg. About the the drip fund with Reaper, what what got me uh, so hooked initially was um, with, with me living in Alaska. Uh, every Alaska resident gets what's called the permanent fund dividend every year, so they pay Alaskan residents just to live there. Um, and what that fund is, it's it's uh, from the oil money that that they've made over the past uh, what has it been sixty years now since they started it. Um, the the fund which has 
14 billion in it, something like that. Um, so the interest made from that fund is what goes to pay uh, every Alaska resident. Well, the drip fund is going to work the same. Um, as it builds, the interest made from it is what's going to eventually become the passive XRP uh, that is paid out. So it, it continues to grow every two weeks when, when he does the reapings. And so the, the passive income that you receive will just grow along with it. Awesome. Now, uh, last thing I'm going to ask you guys, just personally, uh, we just got over 700 live viewers. Um, anything that you want business, personal, ARC uh, Institute, uh, or anything in crypto that you want your audience and all those 700 plus that are watching and the thousands that will be watching on the recorded, uh, on the recorded version of this, uh, just any final thoughts or anything you want to talk about individually? Uh, either one of you guys can go. You can start. Did you say you were starting? I, no, I said you can start. <laughs> um, uh, final thoughts, I suppose. Um, I suppose I would say that in in my humble opinion, I feel that the XRP SEC deal is already a done deal behind closed doors. Um, I, I think everything's already been arranged, organized, sorted, and I think we're just playing a timeline now um, that is going, it's, it's a timeline that's going to play out at the end of the day to the way they want it to, to be. I think everything's, all, I think handshakes have been done. I think it's all a done deal right now. Um, as far as um, what we're involved in with regards to ARC, and the Riley economic system, I would say that uh, just to let everybody know that it's about humanity. It's about helping people. Every branch of the Riley economic system is about creating a better world for we the people. Um, you've got ARC, which helps charities and, uh, and, and rewards in passive. You've got Reaper, which is working towards um helping people pay their debts and also rewards in passive you've got ascension which is buying uh works off the same setup and it's buying um tokens on the ledger and also layer one coins and distri distributing them in passive as well for holders um yeah i i think the whole system if anyone's interested in um the way utility can work, um, they should look at the Riley economic system because it's a beauty. It works fantastic for us and for everybody that becomes involved in it. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to behold at the end of the day, the way it's put together. Love it. That was, that was well said. Um, my final thoughts is go over to Twitter and, and follow Ark of the Reaper. Um, Give us a follow and follow what we're, we're doing, what we're building. We're going to be building constantly. Um, as far as final thoughts, we, we live in a dark time, in a dark place. Um, we, we're, you know, we, we don't know if we're, World War III is about to start. Um, they're, they're starting to draft or actually bring retirees back in. And it's, wow. Um, it's, it's coming. Something's coming. Uh, but in a dark world, just be a light and and find other lights and and make make it brighter. That's right. So that's that's really all I have to say. Well, I appreciate you, gentlemen. It's been an, uh, an amazing honor to have you guys both on. I love what you guys stand for. I love your company, um, and definitely would lo love to have you guys back on the show. Uh, so, with that being said, guys, thank you guys all for being here. Let me go through again. Uh, I know uh, we love giving recognition here. Ball or not one, thank you so much, my sister Liz Herrera. Appreciate you, Optimistic Prime. We'll see you tomorrow, sis. Pre appreciate you, uh, Odyssey, Indie Odyssey. I appreciate you being here, Toastman Tech. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got JC uh, in the house. Uh, more monkey business, Nest Force. Uh, let's see, Anthony Wanner, Nerdy X. Thank you for all your amazing uh, comments, brother, and your support, Becky Forbes. Uh, we have. Uh, let's see, anybody else here that we have? Um, Appreciate each uh, Yusef El Bebe. What an amazing name. Uh, Rosemary, thank you so much for being part of the ARC uh, Institute uh, ecosystem. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, I believe 
uh, Gmail Brown. Thank you guys all for being here. There's so many names we can't get to everybody. Big Bro 10, Big Watch Dude. Thank you so much, guys. Guys, again, I appreciate you guys. Uh, this is actually live on X and on YouTube. I'll make sure I send you guys the links. Make sure you support both of these amazing gentlemen. It's been a pleasure, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you thanks for what you do. Yes, sir. Great Thank having you. us on. Thank you for having us, uh, James. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And for all you guys that are here, we'll see you guys next time. It's your boy James, a.k.a. 6AJ. Peace.